Yes, 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 yes. This is Joe Peters Namaste. If you don't know me, I'm the author of a book. You may know me. I'm the author of a book called The Money Flow Trading System and a book called You Don't Have to Die Broke. And, and I've, for the last couple of years, I've tried to push the message of these books into, well, this social world because it's free. Like anybody can post on YouTube. Anybody can tweet. Anybody can get on Instagram, right? You can take any message, any idea, any business, assuming that it's legal. You can take it to the internet and just talk and just share it socially. You can just share your hobbies and your ideas and your music and your art and your book and your business. And you can just push it. This morning on Instagram, I had Eric Thomas and he was talking about this idea of, of speaking it, of, of, of like claiming things. And like he said he, he wanted to win the Nobel Peace Prize. And I think, woo, that's big, right? Uh, uh, you know, what is a goal that you have? We've been going through these 10 pillars of success on my last video. Pillar number one, we'll recap them quick. How you think is everything. Always be positive, think success, not failure. Be aware of a negative environment. That's obvious, right? Pillar number two, decide upon your true dreams and goals. Write down specific goals and develop a plan. Write down, meaning a life worth living is a life worth recording or recording. Another way of saying it is documenting. Eric talked about that on his video. If you go to my Instagram, you'll see I clipped it. I do that a lot. What am I doing? I'm sharing with you what I'm watching. What is that about? Controlling my environment. Shit, I can fall into a negative environment too. So I need to control what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, what I'm taking in, or at least the self-talk. So if you can listen to things, I think you should. Until you've listened to enough that the voice in your own head is the positive environment. You become the ambassador of opportunity. You know, you're not walking around with a negative reel in your head over and over. You're walking around with this positive inspired reel, realizing, yeah, there's going to be challenges. Yeah, there's going to be people who disagree with me, not believe in me, maybe think I'm crazy. There's people that are going to do that, but who cares? I'm just going to push my intent into the universe. That's what Eric was talking about. And that's, that's what Henry Ford was talking about. That's what Edison was talking about. That's what Rosa Parks was talking about, pushing her intent into the universe, right? Pillar number three, take massive action. Goals are nothing without action. Don't be afraid to get started, just do it. Number four, never, so take massive action. Never stop learning, number four. Uh, number five, we left off with be persistent and work hard. And that's obvious. And I talked about this idea of the eighth day because that's the one thing you can control. Maybe you weren't born good at math. Maybe you can't draw. Maybe you can't sing. Maybe you're not that pretty. Maybe there's a lot of things. Maybe there's a lot of things, a lot of talents, and a lot of skills that you don't have. I don't have. I'm a terrible writer, but I've written books and sold them based upon my own will, my own enthusiasm, my own interest. But I started teaching on this thing called the Alpha Code. And if you go back and listen, you'd have to really deep dive and rabbit hole through my podcast, The Science of Getting Rich. It's on the Apple, okay? I don't really, I mean, I, no, I really don't promote it. It's called The Science of Getting Rich. It's all, it's a gigantic lifelong book study around that book, okay? And inside of the book is a philosophy and a guide and a way of living. And I just began to combine that with this idea. The book teaches this idea that there's a certain way. There's a blueprint. And what it's talking about acting and thinking and talking in a certain way, it means just taking those steps consistently, right? Like every day trying, trying, okay, I'm going to try not to take on any debt today, right? Okay. I'm going to try to, uh, uh, I'm going to try to grow my money. I'm going to get some extra money and I'm going to push it and I'm going to invest it. Um, I'm going to work on my trading skills. Okay. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to move my business and we're going to buy a property and we're going to now own, we're going to own real estate and run the business, right? I'm just constantly trying to push and do something bigger and bigger within my little, what is big to me. Meaning you can only work with what you have, with where you are, with what you can do. So sometimes people say, well, since I can't do it in a big way, I'm just not going to do much. Almost like you're waiting on a, on a break or a job offer or something. And it's like, no, you just got to just start pushing. Eric talked about in his video when he, he had this idea of he wanted to win a Nobel Peace Prize. And so he just woke up and started saying it like you have to speak it and talk it. And in other words, if you're into something, everyone around you should probably get a little fucking annoyed about hearing about it. 
What is that? That's verbal action. Like that's verbal judo. Like you're pushing that shit into the world. You're like, hey, I want to blah, 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 blah. Whatever it is, you're pushing it into the universe. And then you begin to what? Buy books around it, right? And you begin to go to things and you begin to hang out with people. Back to pillar number one, how you think is everything. Be aware of negative environments. So if you're wanting to be a rapper, you're probably going to start bumping into other rappers. If you want to be a writer, guess what you're going to do today? You're going to do some writing, right? Or a musician, you're going to play, you're going to practice. A musician might also teach a magician, ma magician. A musician may also create a book on how to play the guitar. I mean, it shocks me. It shocks me that like you can go to a guitarist page. I play guitar, so I check them out. And they'll be doing some shit and they're like almost none of them are teaching or have made a business out of sharing like how to play. Like I get it, there's, there's all kinds of other books, but maybe you could show me better, right? And maybe it doesn't have to be $500 or some of the crazy shit that I see. You know, I see that with gurus and they're teaching and it's a $4,900 course. Why? Why would it be so expensive? Now, I guess it's different if you're meeting in person and you're taking their time, but the world we live in, you can reach out to tens of thousands of people and never leave your house with a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch of businesses and ideas. And it, 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 we did it in COVID. Like business went virtual. Business went through the atmosphere. Like we're doing business and we're not even at each other's house anymore. That may seem obvious to you. That may seem, yeah, no shit, dude, go back 20 years. That's not the case. That's not the case. Nobody's fucking sitting at home making 300 grand. Nobody's sitting at home making a hundred grand. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's, you know, sitting at a, comp like, and working from their house. This is a new idea. Or, hey, I think I'll just go get in my car, hit a little button, and then I can make some money, like driving around. Like, it wasn't that simple. You had to go and, and really insert yourself. Today, there's so, it, it's unlimited, the ideas and the possibilities, but you have to be open to them. You have to want to receive them. You have to be thinking about it and pushing them out in there in order to get around where you start catching it. You start catching it because other people are having the same idea. Other people are pushing out the same intent. Other people have the business that need the help or they need the product. Like other people have your money. They have your everything, to be honest. Other people, other people have all the money that you want if you're a salesman. Duh, right? Duh. But think on that for a second. What does that mean? That reminded me. Hold on. Uh, did I write it down? Listen. Page seven, Science of Getting Rich. Getting rich involves the necessity of dealing with men. Now, whenever he says men, add women. The book was written in 1905. Getting rich involves the necessity of dealing with men and of being where there are people to deal with. And if these people are inclined to deal with you in the way that you want to deal, so much the better. But that is about as far as environment goes to getting rich. In other words, you have to be where there are people who want to, 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 to hear your message or your service or your product, right? And so that's about pushing yourself out there into the world. It could be to get employment with them, right? Could be to invest in them. Meaning we may have to go find our investments. We have to may seek them out like sharks or hunters, like be looking what I call the money flow where I'm trying to walk around every day in the money flow. I'm trying to walk around. So last week, last week I began telling people and I don't like go, hey, you need to do this. I just start saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. And it's like, I've started allocating chunks of money to the utility sector, the XLU, if you're in the stock market, okay? XLU is made up of 20, 30, 40 of the largest, most prosperous utility companies in America. Remember what just happened in Texas? The utility grid went down. When this shit went down, and, 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 which got me to thinking too, what are other kind of things, like how did this happen? Like seems like there's to be some software or management or something to keep this kind of shit from happening. And I went and looked and I came through my research, the money flow, the universe is pushing me into this. I didn't ask for it to be cold. It just got fucking cold. And the, the power grid went down. And so that got me to looking and I go look and there's this stock CLSK and this is what they do. They create software to help in utilities or businesses or factories or governments or people that are using energy to run it more effectively. They create software that helps you manage it and switches and relays and moving the power around. It's, I don't know how it works. They apparently know how it works. 
They've created software to help people more efficiently do it. Well, guess what? Texas needs that shit. I'm sure it's not just Texas. As everything goes more electric, EV, the whole world's electric and there's less combustion, there's gonna be a bigger draw on the, on, on the electrical system, right? If all the electric vehicles are electric, if all the planes and everything in the fucking world is electric, you need electricity. Now, even if we go solar and wind and renewables and all these different things, guess what? Someone still needs to manage that shit. That's the utility companies. They have the money to buy it. You're not gonna go start a windmill farm. It's fucking billions of dollars. You're not gonna go start a, a 10,000 acre solar thing, create a station and, 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 and stuff to sit. Like you don't have the funds to do that. These are institutional projects. But we can invest in that. Me and me and you can't go do that with a billion dollars, but we can get a piece of it. Inside of the money flow, this shit is fractal. You can just invest in companies that are doing that. They're the kind of companies that, like Workhorse was trying to get a contract with the post office, right? Or, 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 or Salesforce or, or IBM or, or, or Lockheed Martin or Exxon, right? Or Apple or Google. Like, we can play this game. The money flow, that shit is... Amazon is happening right in front of you. I'm on YouTube. You can invest in this shit. You can go look at the history and see how much money would I have made investing in Netflix, Tesla. What about Bitcoin? Bitcoin, the, all of these things are happening right in front of us right now. There's three things right now, right here within our vicinity, meaning we just read it, we just saw it, we just thought about it, we just ordered from there. Money flow could make you a million dollars. I bet there's three that I'm not even thinking of right now. So the weather hits my house. I go find a company that they're trying to create software, their growth, their stuff. They're trying to, this is what they're trying to do, right? But at the same time, just as this happening, I began investing in utility stocks. Now I already own utility stocks. I'm doing this as a, as a deal, let's call it. Meaning I'm trying to get like 30, $40,000 in there so that I can sell it later for 60, $70,000. And in the meantime, collect a dividend. I mean, I'm just trying to put money to work to grow money right now. And then I may take that money and who knows, buy a duplex, buy a house, buy whatever, right? Like it's a deal because like I said, I try to make money with money. And so I'm watching and I'm seeing these utility stocks offer the best value. They pay dividends and I don't see a future where we're not using electricity or the people who manage electricity. And so I'm going to take the money flow, that book I wrote, I told you about, and I watch it. How you think is everything. Decide upon your true dreams and goals. I want to flip this stuff later for many of the companies are 20% undervalued. So I want to try to appreciate my money by 20% and collect a three to 5% dividend to do it. All right. Um, take massive action, meaning I began to push money into that. Like I wrote this shit down. I'm going to try to turn these stocks here into you know, this money, I'm gonna try to appreciate it by 20%. I'm gonna try to collect dividends along the way. This is one deal that I have going, okay? Be persistent and work hard. Success is a marathon, not a sprint. It ain't gonna happen in a day. This shit's gonna take weeks, weeks to play out, right? The, you know, stock's gonna go up and down. Well, what if it breaks down? I'm not selling it. I'm gonna let it come down. I wrote a book, it's called The Stage Four Decline. Price moves in four stages. So as it moves down, I'm gonna wait. And when it sets back up, I'm gonna start pushing money back in again. What happens if price breaks out and rockets on me? I stop. That's part of the plan. Write down your goals. Take massive action. Never stop learning. Keep studying the charts, thinking, reading, looking at barons, watching the markets, looking at the fucking weather. Did I need anything else to point me utility stocks and my utilities going out? So because of this experience in nature, now I've been doing this for 20 years. Meaning you have these all the time. So if you live in an area and oil goes to like zero, you're in Texas, guess what? You should buy oil stocks. Bought a bunch of Exxon, Conoco, Chevron, right? And so you're just playing this game going forward. Now, here's the thing. When they get to where, you're, where they're at, you don't have to sell them. You could just scale them back. So we could create rules for that, right? That's what my books are about. Now, number six, focus your time and money. Don't let other people distract you. What you think about comes about what you focus on grows. So when you get into this idea of the money flow and the money game, the 10 pillars of success are crucial because if you let yourself get sidetracked, if you're around, how you think is everything. If you get around negative people, oh, the market's a scam. The market's going to crash. It's all rigged. Okay. That ain't going to work for you. Okay. 
Number two, you got to decide upon your goals, right? And your dreams. So what is the purpose of this money? Why are we playing in the stock market? What are we trying to do? Is this flip money? Is this investment money? Is it buy and hold? See, I have a whole, I have an entire portfolio. All it is is dividend stocks that pay me dividends. And I try to move the money around a little bit. It's not a trading account. This is buy and hold dividend stocks. And I try to allocate the money and it produces like $2,000 a month in cash flow in the form of dividends. I get to decide how to deploy that. Right now, I got them all just dripping. Time to time, I'll turn that off. I'm still continuing to add to this fund. Okay, so think about that. Here's a big fund of money, pays income. I'm not touching it. I'm redeploying all of the drip. And I'm also using the book, The Money Flow, and I'm trying to buy the ones on sale, harvest a little bit on the ones that run up too high, and just manage this portfolio and just, just collect some money and build wealth and hopefully beat inflation and grow and double my money, right? Stock market averages nine to 10% a year. I'm trying to beat that. On the real estate side, I'm always looking for a deal. Like, so this afternoon when I finish this, I'm gonna go work on a house. I need to do some painting. That was a deal one day where that was my utility. Like my focus was I need to get another house. And I go about my day at work, kids, wife, the bubbles and bath. And at the same time, I've got to tune in and cap into this thing called the money flow and look for these real estate deals. Drive through neighborhoods like this, right? Nowadays, you just get on the MLS. Nowadays, it's all electronic. But that makes it harder and easier, I guess. Before, I mean, you had to leave your house a little bit more. You had to physically go fucking talk to people. Now you can look for real estate and just never leave your house. I would leave your house. I would get in your car. I would get off your fucking couch and I'd get in your car and I would drive your neighborhood. Why? I'm pushing my intent to the universe. I want to own properties. I want to own properties. I want to own properties. You want to sell me your house? And I would go into neighborhoods. How you think is everything, right? Decide upon your true dreams or goals. I want to own properties. Take massive action. Cool. I need good credit score. I need some money in the bank, right? So prior, prior to all this, I'm assuming you got your buckets, right? That's my free ebook. You don't have to die broke. And so this philosophy, this blueprint, this map to acquiring wealth, to becoming financially free, to growing our money becomes like a blueprint or a path. So we have to do it in all these areas. And, and often I get people say, well, should I invest in stocks or real estate? And I'm like, yeah. And they go, no, no. Should I invest in stocks or real estate? Yeah. Both dummy. You should invest in stocks and real estate. What about Bitcoin? You think I should do that? Yeah. Well, what about owning Tesla? Yeah. Yeah. Now we could argue over the price or if it's overpriced or underpriced, but listen to me. Uh, 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 owning Tesla rather than not owning Tesla is smart. Owning Bitcoin rather than having no Bitcoin, that is smart. Owning bonds rather than having no bonds is smart. Owning a house or any, you get what I'm saying. I mean, the very fact that you're in the game, we can argue over single family or residential or all that, but you got to get in the fucking game. You need good credit, you need money, right? And you need deals. And the deals become, the deals are always on the side. See, it's as a blue collar average person, the, your wealth, your riches, your millions, you can get them, but they come from on the side. They're happening when you're at work, you're thinking about some shit, and then you're on the MLS, and then at lunch, you're calling them, boom, and it's a big fucking pain in the ass, and through this process, somehow, you buy this house, and now you have this piece of shit house that you go to work on every day to bring it back to life and make it beautiful. Why? Because that was your goal. And how you think is everything, and you realize you've seen these dipshits on TV do it. You see these dummy gurus selling you real estate courses can do it. All the morons that work on houses and paint them, and I've hired some morons, let me tell you. They all do it, so I know you can do it. Anything that I can do, you can do. Henry Ford, Apple, you can do. Now, you may not be able to play on an NFL team if you weren't born with legs. Right? That don't mean you can't own the team. I don't mean you can't, do, you know, whatever at the team. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it might, we might come at this differently. So you say, Joe, well, I live in, I live in California and you can't buy real estate like that. What about trailer parks? What about that? Can you do trailer parks? No. What about syndications? Syndications means you just put your money in with some other people that manage the real estate. Oh, you said, well, I don't know which one I don't, uh, you know, I don't trust them. I know it's called fucking work, bro. Get off your ass and do the due diligence. What do you think corporations do? Hedge funds, uh, 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 what do you think Warren Buffett does? You think they just willy nilly put money in fucking businesses? No, what do you think he does all day? He reads, he studies. So he goes to Crowd Street. 
and fucking researches, spends hours, hundreds of hours reading, orders books on Amazon, goes to the, calls their company support, like fuck with the system, and then put some money in it. Now you got ten, twenty thousand dollars in a real estate syndication. Now what do you do? Go back and get another thing. What's the next deal? Maybe now it's going to be this utility stock deal. Okay. Maybe now it's to smash your four hundred one k at work. Like maybe they're matching it, and that's the obvious layup. I'm talking to a guy yesterday. He wants to talk about buying what it was it trading forex, and I said, tell me about your job. And he said, well, and I said, no, tell me about your four hundred one k. It's with Vanguard. Cool. Right? I don't like the fees, but cool. And then I said, well, why do you have access? He showed me, he's got the S&P 500. And I, and I said, how much can he, he said, we put in 5%, they'll put, they'll ma no, they'll match us 5%. I said, well, how much are you putting in? And he said, I'm not. Like that deal's in front of you. They are giving you free fucking money every month, dude. Are you out of your fucking mind? So the universe is not gonna give you anything if you don't take the free money sitting on the table. So when a guy's trying to look for the best way to, you know, uh, you know, I don't know how to invest, good. Put it in an index fund right now. Is that the best thing in the world? To me, no, but it's better than not doing it. So in other words, then you just start putting money in and you watch the market go up and you watch the market go down and what's happening? You're invested, you're learning, your money will go down, no shit. It's called market cycles. So let me give you a tip. When you come into investing or real estate, I bet you've never done this. When you go to, this is how I speed learn things. I go in, the first thing I do is start with the history. How did the stock market start? I wanna know where, why do they call it Wall Street? Who were the first people? What is a brokerage house? And I start from fucking point zero and work myself backwards in time to get to the modern day. I don't want the new people influencing me. I don't want new people changing history and reinterpret it and tell me their point of view. I want to start at the beginning and work backwards. Where did the guitar come from? How was it made? What country? You know, like, I mean, that way, why? Because how you think is everything. So if I can get my mind around it, philosophically around the thing that we're looking at, that we're talking about, that we're going to invest in. So if I'm going to do an index fund, I just need to go study the history of the stock market. And then, and then I can go and study history of crashes. And then through the study of my history, I noticed it seems like every crash comes back. And they go, yeah. And then why the fuck would people sell? If it's come back every time, even COVID, it came back stronger and harder. Why would anyone sell? Why wouldn't you buy more? Just because the price changed, why wouldn't you buy more? And I realized it's because of scarcity, not opportunity because the opportunist is excited. The person who operates and lives in scarcity is nervous. I may not get any more money. Money's limited to me. I don't have big, I mean, I'm not seeing a big picture. I'm here right now and I'm afraid. And it's a life lived in scarcity. And it's a lot of times just because they never studied. They never went back to the beginning, right? They, they weren't overly concerned. They didn't sit down and go, I wanna get rich. I wanna push my intent into the universe. I wanna learn about the things that I'm doing. They've just decided that, hey, I'm blue collar. I'm average. I can't get rich. There's nothing that I could do to make myself rich. And yet it's all around you. The money flow is everywhere. You're driving by it on the way to work, gas stations, malls, fucking land, real estate, just shit. You can just, if you have money, you can just buy it. You can own it. You can rent it. You can lease it. You can flip it. All of this stuff is unlimited and it's completely fractal. You can play on any level of any skill. And a lot of it, you're just pushing fucking buttons with your thumbs. And yet there's people, should I buy Bitcoin? Why not? You ain't got none now. You get what I'm saying? As you begin to just look at things on a big picture of that philosophy, should I own, well, I, it's better than not owning one. What about index funds? Good, I wish I had $10 million in an index fund. Well, what about apartment buildings? Shit, I'll take all of them. Well, what about trailer houses? Love to have a thousand of them. What about tech stocks? Love them. What about dividend stocks? Awesome. You see, because all of those asset classes and all of those deals and all of those things and business ideas all happen at different times based on the money flow. Like life is gonna push you through. And so you can own this and then get into this while holding this and then get into this while holding this and this and then get into this while holding this, this and this and then get into this while holding this, 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 and this, and this. And then the whole fucking pie is paying you. And that's how you go from normal human being, blue collar, 
to multi-millionaire is first you have to get in your mind that you're going to have to take money that you don't need. See, the trick to money is simply having fucking money. When you get a three, let's say $5,000 you don't need and you put it right here. Then you run over here and you get another $5,000 you don't need and you put it right there. Now there's 10 and you don't spend it. And you go get another five. Now there's 15. Now there's 20. Now there's 25. Now you could buy a house in my area. You know why the guy doesn't take that to buy a house? He thinks he's losing this. He doesn't understand it when he buys the house, the 25 just became 150 or 130. When he took the 25, he just leveled up. So yeah, for a minute, he saved five, saved five, saved five, saved five. It takes a while. Focus your time and money. Don't let other people distract you. What you think about comes about. What you focus on grows. Number seven, focus on the big picture. Don't let the little details slow you down. You don't have to get it right. Just get it going. Oh, I couldn't do five this month. It was just 200. Okay, put it there. Big fucking picture. That's what that account is. So you want to buy real estate. This is how you do it. This is exactly how I bought my house. Go back to work. Come back. Put money in it. Sacred fucking account. That money doesn't come out for anything. Go back. Find money. Boom. Got enough. Get on the MLS. Drive around. Hey, I'd like to buy your house. Hey, I'd like to buy a house. Push my intent to the universe. Decide upon your true dreams and goals. That was it. We already wrote it down, right? I know I can afford a house for 130. I got 30,000 for down payment. Here's my credit score. Here's my sacred account. That's where you're going to put your fucking rent money too. Is back in that sacred account, okay? Boom, boom, boom. Because if your house needs a repair, we're going to hit the sacred account first, okay? We don't want to come into your income. We want the house to prosper you, not, not drain you, okay? Back to work. Put money in, put money in, put money in. Second house. Third. See, the first four are hard. This is when you start to get easy. About the time you get to the fourth house, now you have an opportunity to make it easy on yourself. You can go back to the first house. Now, you could do it sooner, but this is what I advise. Why? Because I just gave you the fucking savings muscle. You will never get rich if you can't save money. What I mean, make money, get it, put it aside. Get money, get it, put it aside. Now, you could drip that shit into investments. I do. Dude, I buy $100, $200 in stocks every fucking day. Every day. Monday through Friday, constantly. I've been doing that for that style. Well, the moment they went to no commissions, it was... Prior to that, it was like every other day. But since they went to no commissions, shit, I'll buy one fucking share of a $30 stock. Boom. Every day I'm buying shares. When you do that your whole life, you're rich. You understand that, right? You understand that. That's how it works. That's the basic blueprint. Repetition is the mother of skill. The thing that you'll do, the thing that you'll get up to do over and over and over, whether people support you or not, the thing that you'll just do will bless you. And that's how that works. House four, we're going to pull equity out on house three. We go to the bank. Hey, Mr. Banker, I'd like you to come look at my house. They go look at it. Remember, you put 20% down. It's been appreciating for a couple years now. Paid down the loan. It's probably a little bit of a nugget there. We can pull it out, take that money, go buy house number five. Oh, in the meantime, we're saving. In the meantime, all of these houses are paying into that central checking account that you're also putting money in. This is the exact blueprint that I did. When I got to the 10th house and I'm collecting eight to $12,000 a month in rent, I'm a normal fucking guy. No college, no degrees, just work, save money, invest it, put that money back into the account. See the big picture, do it every day. Just keep doing it, keep doing it. Oh wait, this stock's on sale. Beep. Start buying some of that stock. Beep. Go back to the house, right? Now, once I got to four houses, five houses, the houses are producing money. So the houses are bringing in bonus money. There's money, it's just, even if I don't pile up money, the houses are piling up money. Guess what happens with the stocks when you get to like $100,000 in say dividend stocks? The dividend stocks are piling up money even if you don't. If you stop fucking investing, $100,000 will earn it like it's gonna double every seven years. If it's properly, safely, you know, traditionally allocated in dividend stocks or the S&P 500, it's gonna appreciate, right? Give or take. Now, but you, you could watch sectors. And all of a sudden, uh, mortgage rates going to sell, you buy a whole bunch. MLP is going to sell, you buy as much as you can at that time. Oil stock's going to sell, and then you just keep the shit. 
You just keep it. You don't have to argue about it or balance it. Just fucking keep it. And then you find a house and you've told me, go buy a house. All of a sudden you have all of these assets. Maybe businesses too, right? Maybe your job. I don't know what it is you do to make money. I'm, this is all happening on top of that shit. This is all going on. The houses and the stocks is all happening outside of work. It's after work. It's on the weekends. This is why it's never done. Because that's over fucking whelming to most people. The idea that after work, you're going to try to get these stock deals going. Now, maybe at work, maybe at work, you can look at the markets and do all that if you can. Fucking awesome. Okay, great. And once I got to the point where I was free to just do these things, then that's what I did. That was my goal. My goal ultimately was I needed to get to $1 million invested between real estate and stocks. And if I could get to there, then I knew I could make enough money with my hands, mowing yards. You see, like I built a lot of this, just basic shit, right? Look, nothing fancy. You see where I did these repairs? Like just basic stuff, man. Right? So I can make money. I'll just go work for money. I needed to get to a million bucks. Well, you get to a million bucks and you realize you probably need a little more. And so I, different jobs, well, I haven't worked a job since I was 33, but I got to the million bucks at age, I worked a part-time job after that, and then I worked, I had a lawn care business. But I haven't worked a job since I was 33. I'm 51. 51? Or 50? No, I'm 50. 51. Shit. Um, it's just been making money with money. Like I'm saying, these deals, moving things around, and then just doing things on the side. But that was my goal. My goal was to do real estate and investing and trade stocks for a living. Like that was the goal 20 years ago. That's everything has been to work toward that. The jobs I had, the things I did for extra money was to get money to invest money. Okay. Like I needed to make money to invest money. That's been my goal for like 20 years. Now in the middle of that, you got kids and the wife and husband and you got to pay bills and you blah, 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 blah. So this is serious pushing of your intent into the universe. This is why so few people do this because it is fucking hard. And it's a heavy crown that you're trying to wear when you have 10, 15, 20, 30 little deals going like I described. 30 in this one, 50 in this one, 80 in this one, 20 in this one, 30 in this one. And all of these are sending money into the mothership, you know, to the home office, just money coming in, hopefully, or turning over. Or, or like I had some land I bought years ago. I've flipped all my land now. I have the money for that. I needed to do something with that. That money's not for me to spend. That money's for a deal. I put $2,000 and $13,000 into two pieces of land. That was down payments. I let my properties, the houses, make the mortgage payments. And on 10 year notes, was it 10 years? And then about six years into it, I just paid them off. Been sitting on them, land. Well, they doubled, a little more than double. Flip them. But here's the thing, I get the full price. <laughs> I put that little money down, I let my renters of course, that's my money too, but I get, I mean, I let this asset make the payment on this asset. And so I, it wasn't my money and you know, it is my money, but it wasn't my money from work is what I'm saying. I have assets buying assets. You see what I'm saying? And so this payment's being made and we just sit on the property. The property appreciates it's in subdivisions and now it's worth a double or more than what I paid for it. And, and, and it's paid for. And so it's like it's 80,000 and you know, 40,000 or whatever. Well, all I remember putting down was like two and, and, and 13 or 10 or whatever it was, right? It wasn't much. It was 20% down, 30% on land. Sorry, 30%. And uh, 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 may have been 40, 30 or 40. I don't want to lie. Percent down. It's a little different than a house when you when you borrow on land. And and then it's just been a payment inside of the, the you know, the, 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 the business, the investment, my money, it, it pays for. And... But all of a sudden you get paid out. Now you got a big chunk. You got $150,000. We got to put this to work. So what, you know, that would be a large piece of land, right? If that was 20% down that. So I could take the 150, what, and buy what? A $400,000, $500,000 asset. So what am I doing? I'm on the look. I'm on the hunt. I'm looking for this. This is going to come on top of everything else I'm doing right now. On top of the trading, on top of recording and business and podcasting and trying to sell books and teaching and doing all the things, working on other houses, on top of all of life. 
I'm looking for that deal. And that's just the way of just one deal at a time, man. Anybody, that is your only option if you're blue collar and you're in this America. You gotta find deals. You gotta look out for you. You gotta put your intent on your money. And that's what this book is about, The Science of Getting Rich. I didn't write that book, but that book is a blueprint. Number eight, think outside the box. Everything I just said. Number nine, deal and communicate effectively with people. And we'll end with this. I went a little long. When I say that you do not have to drive sharp bargains, I do not mean that you do not have to drive any bargains at all or that you're above the necessity of dealing with your fellow man. I mean that you will need to deal with them. You don't need to deal with them unfairly. You do not have to get something for nothing, but you can give to every man more than you took from him. You cannot give every man more in cash market value than you take from him, but you can give them more in use value than the cash value of the thing that you take from him. In other words, go above and beyond. That's what he's saying. In other words, all of the money that you want is in the pockets, purses, wallets, checkbooks, and credit cards of other people. The only reason my dividend stocks pay me money is they produce a product that people want. People provide that money. The only reason my real estate makes money is not because of me, because I fucking painted it or all that bullshit. It's because people moved in and then they write me checks every month. Other people, we are all connected. God bless. I hope this helped.